Let's rehouse a tarantula. Hello and welcome back to Incurable Inverse and Other Animals with me, Phil. As I said I'm going to be rehousing a tarantula. One of my salmon pink birdies or Lassiodora parahabanas. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we go with a rehousing of a salmon pink birdie inspired or Lassiodora parabana. So it's coming out of this enclosure. It's got oh, really a bit too small for it. It's uh, not quite as clean as it once was. And yeah, again, I just don't really like this style of enclosure. So getting this, uh, this one out. So I've raised this one since then. It's actually done really well in here. And it's been in here. Uh, sometimes smoked quite a few times in here. Um, really, really well. But yeah, I just don't like this style of enclosure. Um, so you're getting out nice and easy, uh, capturing a little bit of flick in there, uh, but nothing too major. And then this is the enclosure that I've prepared for it. So it's an old glass one that I've had lying around. Give it a good old clean up. Uh, substrate mix of uh, organic compost and coir, along with uh, a high sort of party buried, uh, pothos uh, or uh, devil's ivy cutting, stuff which you'll probably just destroy. Stuff, uh, some moss and other plant cutting as well, and some uh, dry leaves. Bit of decor and a plastic uh, lid for the water. It's actually a, uh, a gravy lid, I think. So a nice uh, large water bowl for it. So, and uh, I'm going to get this one in. So, so yeah, substrate's a few inches deep. So, so it can do a bit of a burrow if it wants to, but it's got that uh, hide partially buried uh, as like a starter burrow type thing for it. I'm just going to gently try and coax it out uh, with a paintbrush out of here. Um, but again, you know, you don't need to rush uh, this thing. I always say this in any kind of rehousing stuff. You really don't have to rush these, uh, this process. Um, you don't really want to stress the spider out. And also, if you stress out the spider out, you're going to just stress yourself out as well. So just go in gently. So it may take a while. It could take 20 minutes. It could take, you know, sometimes an hour or whatever. It could take two minutes. It doesn't really matter. So then one thing you can do, again, is actually just... If it's uh, the enclosure you're going into is big enough and you've got something that's small enough for it you can just uh, leave what it's in inside the enclosure for it to come out at its own accord whenever it feels like um, which actually is the easy you know the easiest option but it's definitely uh, quite a good option now it could be one of the best options um, as yeah it's far less stress on the spider far less stress on you as well so you can see there's a little bit of flicking there so every time it flicks a bit I just leave it alone for a moment uh, just in hope that it sort of calms down and then try it again Oh, um, so it took a little bit longer to get out than it did to get in the catch cup. And so I'm just going in again, just gently. So I'm going in with the uh, actually the back of the paintbrush. Uh, this instance, I'm going to see a bit of flicking. So you do want to be careful with these guys, as they do. Uh, yeah, I find they do flick the hairs quite readily. Oh, and yeah, just again, just let them have a moment just to settle down. And so. I was here complaining whether just to, to leave this uh, the catch cup in here uh, with it and then come back later. So, um, as, it, as you see, it turned around and gone back up to the other end. So, at the other end, there is uh, just the little bottle that I use. So I could take it off, but I won't be able to get through that hole, so that's uh, not really an option. Uh, but it's an option for some of the, the sort of smaller spies and stuff. Sometimes just take the lid off and there you go that way. <laughs> Again, just gentle, gentle coaxing. So I've, um, so I'm actually hardly touching the spider, just to get it alive and go into the, the sort of burrow that I've made for it. Uh, and jobs are good, and so I've all settled down in there quite happily. So I've, but I do find with these guys, or at least most of my uh, salmon pinks, uh, I've got a few do, uh, especially once they're uh, kind of a good size like this, do just sit down about uh, all the time. So there we go, and there it's in. So absolutely, absolutely beautiful spider. So absolutely love these guys. Uh, really underrated as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Get a real decent size as well. And here it is, sort of slightly closer up uh, footage of it in the enclosure, having a bit of an explore. Okay, guys, so that was a rehouse of one of my salmon pink bird eater spiders. What do you guys think? Uh, it won't be in there forever, uh, but it's bigger than what it did have. It's certainly a lot better than what it did have. And so, um, I don't necessarily mind if the plants take or not. They're just cuttings. Um, and so, apart for put them in, you know, it makes a nice release a little bit. I can always add some more uh, as and when. 
and stuff. And uh, yeah, it seems to be enjoying it in there so far. But what do you guys think? If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Pop some comments down below. And if you haven't yet, please do consider uh, subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell for notifications so you know next time I upload another video. So um, when this video comes out, I will be hopefully set up by now uh, at the Western Invertebrate Show at Bristol. So if you're in the queue watching this uh, or on your way there, do come and say hi uh, if you see me. As I've, I will be around. Uh, Victoria T and Deep Blue Sea will be with me as well. And there'll be many, many other people there. But ultimately, have a great day and the show. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, stay safe, and keep rocking.